Welcome to the Money Watch Show. It's Tuesday, March 26th. It is officially spring, although on the first day of spring in New York City, it was chilly. I was a little, I had to bundle up again, got that hat out. It's crazy. Anyway, hope you're doing well. I am Jill Schlesinger, CBS News business analyst and certified financial planner. And you, you are Mark Talercio. Hi, Mark. Hello, Jill. You say chilly. I say frigid. It was freezing. It was. It was seriously cold. And it was funny because, um, okay, so I'll I'll get to this in a second, but part of my um, consternation about the weather was that, oh, it's cold again. Maybe I'll wear one last winter outfit on the air because I was on CBS Mornings this morning. So I'm speaking to you. It is March 19th as we record this. We are doing it a week in advance because we're so smart and I'm going away. So Mark, I had pulled out last night getting ready for my hit this morning on TV. I was like, oh, I can wear this nice, like sort of black leather dress, leather and suede, looks great. And then I woke up in the morning, normal kind of quarter to five. And uh, I was like, wait a minute, it is actually officially spring. So that's weird. I'm going to be talking about the fact that it is spring on the air. So I switched my outfit. And when you get the video this morning, you'll see I'm wearing pretty in pink spring. What are you wearing to celebrate your springtime? Uh, I was bundled up this morning. I had on my winter coat, sweatshirt. Mm. It was, Theo Theo was not too happy. I think he's uh, kind of over the cold weather right now. <laughs> I want to talk about a couple of things um, before we get to springtime. You guys probably have heard this, but I think it's worth talking about uh, the fact that we have a settlement for the National Association of Realtors. This news broke, of course, after I had like put up my weekend blog post and then, you know, what happened, of course, then I had to redo the whole thing. This lawsuit is kind of interesting because uh, last fall, the National Association of Realtors lost a big court case. And that case was a you know, essentially an antitrust lawsuit, which accused the National Association of Realtors and a couple of other large real estate brokerage firms. It accused them that they said you conspired to keep home sale commissions artificially high. Okay. So when that ruling came out last fall, it was a penalty of 1.78 billion with a B dollars. Now that'll catch your attention, right? I mean, that's a serious number. The more important part of it is that even though they said, ah, we're going to appeal this, evidently under U.S. antitrust law, damages can be tripled. So if you lose the appeal, you're out of business. Okay. So then the uh, National Association of Realtors announces a settlement and they said they're going to pay $418 million in damages. So it's a fraction of 1.78, but it's still a big number. Importantly, Mark, unfortunately for you, after you've made your real estate transaction, this is going to completely blow up how the real estate industry has paid people for the agency, the agent, the broker who's involved. So if there's a million dollar house, let's make it even easier. Let's say it's a $500,000 house, okay, or apartment. You say, all right, Sometimes people say five or six percent, whatever it is. Let's just call it let's call it six for the heck of it. Okay. So to be clear, you have this five hundred thousand dollars, and now you say, Oh, I'm paying six percent commission, which is 30 grand, right? And that 30 grand is split between the buyer's agent and the seller's agent, but it comes out of the sales price. So what's fascinating to me is that now the whole the 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 claim is especially after this big real estate boom, where I looked this up, by the way, uh, home prices nationally are up 46% from where they were before the pandemic. Okay. So December, 2019 to December, 2023, 46% increase. And all these realtors just got paid more money and they were doing the exact same job. So it's sort of like people who say to us like, ah, why should I pay someone 1% to manage my money? Isn't it the same 1% whether it's 500,000, a million or 2 million. And it's true. It just has to be, you're getting something for your money. So now what is going to happen? Presuming this is uh, uh, actually affirmed by the court because the judge has to approve this. Now what will happen is if you go buy a, if you're going to buy a piece of property, you will negotiate separately with your own agent and it will be anywhere between zero and 3%. You'll, you may, you'll say, or maybe it'll be a flat fee. And, you know, I think this is a great model. 
because I think that the real estate industry, I know that we have plenty of people who are realtors, so I don't want to uh, ruffle any feathers. But I think for a long time, realtors have felt like, you know, if you're a really good one, you give tons of service and the really bad ones don't. And there's no differentiation. Everyone's still getting paid that same 3% and 3%. Wouldn't it be cool if we had an industry where you could say, well, you know, I'll pay some flat fee to get um, access to multiple listing service and I'll go do my own negotiations. I've done this before. Or maybe you would pay 1% or maybe, maybe this is what I'm interested in seeing, whether mortgage companies will start to say, we will fold in your commission that you pay or your fee that you pay your realtor into a mortgage. I think that might be interesting. I think that's a way to, because you know what the pushback I got when I talked about this on the radio 18 times? The pushback was, I don't want to have to pay it out of pocket. I don't want to have to be the person who has to, like, would you want to write a check for 15 grand on a $500,000 purchase of a house? Nobody likes to write checks, but either way, if, if it's cooked into something else, you're still paying. I know, but it, it'd make it easier, right? Yeah. Anyway, so here's the deal. I think the real estate model is just ripe for some serious, serious destruction. And we're going to see what it's going to be. But, you know, some analysts predict that a hundred billion dollars that consumers pay in commissions annually, that that's going down by 30 percent. So do you think, Mark, if you're considering that, that there's some money's going to get squeezed out, right? Will that mean that home price prices go down? Because now I don't have to get as much money and a bid for my house if I'm only paying for half the commission. Will it go down? Yeah, that's what everybody seems to think. Then it's just kind of a wash. I, I don't know. I, I, I can't see that they're going to drastically re drop in price. I really don't. I don't see it at all. I think this is I think this is fantasy land because let me let me do some math for you. Let's say there's let's talk about our thirty thousand dollar commission, right? So now I'm I, I've got a five hundred thousand dollar house that's on the market where by the way we don't have enough inventory in housing. We just don't, right? Okay. I got five hundred thousand dollars and now am I really going to take four eighty five because I'm not paying someone's fifteen grand? <laughs> I doubt that highly. I really do. I just don't. Th I don't buy this. I think it is no way going to happen. Now, maybe eventually it's going to happen. Maybe it's going to shake out. But this is like when, you know, in the in the investment world, when knuckleheads got rich in the finance, just being brokers because they sold eight and a quarter percent mutual funds. You, you literally had to pay a commission of eight and a quarter percent on the way in. It's like 1985. That's what the cost was. Now that's zero. So did the brokerage business, they said, oh, you're going to kill the brokerage business. It did not. But you had to actually offer service. Uh, so I think that this is going to be a great thing for the real estate industry. You know who's not going to be happy? Low earning real estate agents. They're just not going to be happy about this. Um, there are one and a half million members of the NAR, I think. And these folks who are doing like real analysis, they think that there are going to be number of brokers will be cut in half. That's yeah. a huge change in the industry. I don't think uh, I don't know when this is really we're going to actually start to see the impact of this. Like I said, we're, we're about to put up an apartment on the market, but I, I can't let it stop me. We're just no. going to list it and get no, it done. You got to get, go get going. You can, it's fine. Uh, all right. Now. Which just reminds me that it is spring. It is spring home buying season. And by the way, this morning I was on CBS Mornings talking about spring cleaning for your finances. Nate Burleson, Gail King, Tony DeCopel, and I sat down and we had a great conversation about what to shred and what to keep. Here is the segment. Today is the first day of spring, and in today's Money Watch, we are talking about spring cleaning your finances. Now is a great time of the year to clean out that clutter financially and deal with some important financial issues. CBS News business analyst Jill Schlesinger is here, and she joins us with some tips on how to help. Yes. Okay, so when it comes to tax documents, what can we keep? What can we toss? I want to just say one thing. Mommy, pay attention. Stop asking me this question. Okay. <laughs> so the reality is that the IRS can audit you for the last three years. You need to keep returns for three years. Now, if they find a problem, they can go back another three years. So that means you should hang on to tax documents for six years just to be safe. Most people file electronically, so you may be happy that there's just a little folder somewhere. But if you keep those physical returns... Make sure it's in a safe place. And by the way, when you stumble upon the old ones, fire up the shredder 
and put them through the shredder. You think mm. a shredder is a necessity for people to have? Yeah, absolutely. I'm still rip, rip. Well, rip. I think the problem Lots is that rip. scammers are yeah. out for you, okay? Oh. And they do go through garbage. And so I want to be clear. It's really cheap to buy an easy little home office shredder. Please, old tax documents especially are have, have all of your information in it. So shred those documents. Should we be organizing our bank statements? <sighs> well... Most banks, when you bank electronically, you can go back for a year. But what if you don't? So I mean, if you don't, I say one year, one, one year, one year of statements, okay. shred the rest. Ah. Now, the other thing that's interesting about bank statements is you may want to circle something that's like a big purchase that you want to say, hmm, let me make sure I have that itemized. Or maybe you're keeping something for tax purposes. So you keep a little file folder and it says... Bank statements, tax. Or but just a year. Okay. Just a year. That's really all you need. Unless you want to keep it forever because you think it's like a warranty situation. Gotcha. Right? Then that's that's important as well. Let's talk about that forever category. What should we keep forever? <laughs> okay. It's a long time, I know. So <laughs> obviously, when you look at a birth or a death certificate, you can get copies of things. It's a pain in the neck. Yeah, okay. It is. Social security cards. That's another thing. Marriage licenses, divorce decrees, military discharge papers estate documents. Now, these should be kept in a fireproof box in your home where no one's going to stumble upon it, right? No no one who like happens to burglarize your right. home is going to find it. So when you keep it in a big drawer that says important documents, yeah. they're very happy to take that. Somebody so, just asked me, do I have the deed? Oh, okay. And I have no idea where that is. Okay, that's a problem also. Yeah, so we no have idea. documents that are associated with your house. So a deed is a big one. Mm. An inspection is a Apparently big one. Apparently we should keep a deed. You should keep a deed, yeah. as a matter of fact. <laughs> Warranties. Um, mortgage documents for as long as you have that mortgage. If you've paid off the mortgage, go ahead and shred it. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you bought something that's like a big improvement, like a big, um, let's say a stove, or something that proves that you've increased the value of your home. So I would keep documents that are associated with a big home renovation. Mm. That's something to keep in your well, stuff. Jill, every time you're on, you remind me of that. For anyone who's a little still young out there, for the teenagers, this is what growing up is. <laughs> oh. Just yeah. keeping documents. This is adulting. Oh, checking off your to-do list. Mm -hmm. oh, Jill Slester, thank you very much. You make it fun, though. You do. So, Mark, a um, couple of other spring cleaning um, issues that I wanted to get to. How about we use this time of year to say, do you have a whole bunch of different uh, retirement accounts floating around? I mean, people seem to have play money all over the place. So Mark, what about the consolidation? You want to give your mantra about why consolidation is so fabulous? I mean, I'm, you know, you know me, I'm like you, we're, we're less is more when it comes to that stuff. I, I just like as little as possible, it's easier to manage. Uh, you know, if there's a zillion different things all over the place, it's just, it's very, it can be very confusing. It's just hard to keep everything in order. You got a zillion different statements coming at you mm, not from good. different, different institutions. Just like try to get everything in it as much as possible in one place. Think about those poor orphaned retirement accounts. And also, I think it's really great if you just, if you want to make it easy for yourself. I know there's a lot of people that say, oh, roll it into an IRA rollover. I would prefer, frankly, that you just move it. If you have a, at least a decent plan at work, just move it into your workplace plan. One workplace to another workplace. Then if we want to do some stuff with a uh, backdoor Roth, then we don't have to worry about IRA accounts floating around. So make sure if you have a pre-tax account to a pre-tax account, if you have a Roth account to a Roth account. If you have a rotten plan through your work or you don't have a plan at work, then all you need to do is open up a IRA account at one of my favorite places that will give you access to index funds. And you know this group of people, right? You know, so anywhere where you can get low cost index funds, you transfer all the old accounts in. And yes, it's a pain in the neck. And yes, there's a little bit of work, but it's so much easier to manage your money. Do what Mark says, please. One last thing that I really think is also important, and that is, um, you know, we talk so much about credit. By the way, credit scores are um, down by one point. And of course, the Wall Street Journal, as usual, reporting uh, credit scores down for the first time in a decade. Did you hear that, Mark? Did you see that? That was the headline. And of course, what were they? They were down by one point from an all time high for the last 30 years. 
People freak out about that, though. It really, really, really tweaks people when they see their credit scores going down for no real reason. I know. Well, I mean, they have gone down for real reasons, probably. But you know what? If you're really freaked out about your credit score, calm down, first of all. It, if you're going to borrow money, yeah, sure. But like if you're over 800 and it went from like 820 to 818, deep breath. OK, gang. All right. I'll tell you what you should do. Spring cleanup wise. Go grab your free credit report at annualcreditreport.com. Review the information there because all the stuff that's in your credit report is what builds on the score. That's what the that's what the scoring companies do. They take the stuff from the reports from Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. They put it into their proprietary model, but it's basically they will actually build their own credit score from that. So we have to start with the source information. Annualcreditreport.com gives you a free credit report once a year and you look at the information, identify any errors that are there, and then you've got to dispute it with a credit reporting company. Now, I think there's a place online where you can do this. I'll tell you what I would do. Uh, I would go to the credit reporting company directly in writing, say what you think is wrong and include any co copies of documents that support your dispute. That's how you'd like, that's how you make this stuff go away. So that's it. That's my spring cleaning. Any other spring cleaning for you, man? No, I mean, I really don't get any more paper documents. I, I get nothing in the mail. Everything is online. And, and as far as tax returns, I just keep seven years worth. So basically every year I, I throw out one year's worth of tax returns from seven years ago. Can I give you the funniest little ec um, little extra fun tidbit of my inside my stupid life? <laughs> so I'm planning for this segment about what to keep and what to shred. So in CBS News, by the way, thank God we have like a real standards department, meaning like there are people who look at scripts every day that goes through legal if there's some legal issue. OK, so I get a note from standards th that is not a standards issue. It says the guy says to me, oh, do people really have shredders? Is that a thing? I call him up. I said, are you out of your mind? Why do you think there are forty nine dollar shredders at Staples? Yes, people have shredders. He goes, well, can't I just rip it up? I said, no, you can't. You have to get a shredder. <laughs> and I say the same thing to everybody. But I just said this to my mother. She goes, my shredder doesn't take the big. I said, okay, when you go to the accountant, because, you know, my mother's old school. She's dropping all her documents off at the accountant. Bring him a stack of stuff to shred. They have a massive shredder at a CPA's office. Do that. Or they do it. They have it at a, at a law firm. Or you know what? A lot of places will do shredding for you. Sometimes you go to these office locations like FedEx or uh, if you go to Staples, I bet they even have one in, a, in an actual store. Go shred your documents. Do not ask and don't buy yourself a problem. I don't understand why people can't do this. This is not that big a deal. So please, please, please. Okay, good. That's it, Mark. What do you think? Fire up that shredder, baby. Fire it up and uh, don't let standards get you down. That's what I have to say. All right. Thank you so much. Hey, if you've got a question, just go to our website, jillonmoney.com. Click the Contact Us button. Don't forget to sign up for the free weekly newsletter and check out our YouTube show. It's called Jill on Money Powered by the Compound. Mark Dallaire, she is the co-host and executive producer, as well as the king of all things web at Jill on Money. We are distributed by Paramount Global. We drop episodes Tuesdays and Thursdays. Please leave us a rating and review wherever you listen and try to do something nice for someone else today. Change your work, change your wealth, change your life. Thank you for listening, and we'll talk to you next time.